All right. Now, as I've been talking, two or three group members have been feeling their wounded energy. Just talking helps move that energy along. And that's one of the benefits of being in a healing group, is that just talking about these issues helps to open us up and helps us to feel our feelings. And as you do that, you're going to be, it's like um, steam letting off of a um, uh, double boiler. The pressure is reduced. All right, so here we have Delyn, and we're going to use her as an example of what I'm describing. Okay. So, Delyn, you said that a couple of days ago you started really having a lot of energy rise up. Well, um, I just have to say the whole story. We want to hear it. Okay. Last Thursday, I <clears throat> got in the car with four people that I hadn't, I never met before, and drove to California to shoot a wedding. And. Oh, you were photographing a wedding. Yeah, to photograph it and not shoot it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's just fancy photographer talk. Yeah. But we caught up. And I was really nervous to go. Um, it took praying and meditating all day to to get the courage to step outside of my comfort zone and go. And I finally just said... And you were being paid as a photographer. Yeah. I finally just said, okay, whatever happens, happens, and I'm not expecting anything out of this. And my intention is to learn as much as I can about myself that I can from these people. And so we stopped in Vegas. The whole time they were just asking me questions, trying to get to know me. And um, we got to Vegas, and four of us were old enough to go um, drink. So we went out to a club, and so one of the guys there, his name is Russell, was very forward and um, hitting on me a lot, mm -hmm. and I was flattered <clears throat> by it, and I flirted back and drinking and drinking and drinking and more flirting, and um, about halfway through the night, I... I start feeling uncomfortable, and so I was like... You uh, feeling uncomfortable? Yeah, instead of... How come? Just because I, I could see it going in a direction I didn't want it to go. A direction? Like, having sex with this guy. Mm -hmm. And so I said to him, just so you know, I have... I am honest with my husband, and I have to tell him everything that goes on. And so, please don't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really mean, I said it, but I didn't really mean it completely. And so, I was dancing and just, I was just continued to flirt with him and, um. So you made an effort. Yeah. But not wholehearted. But not wholehearted. <clears throat> yes. And so the, the girl that hired me was trashed. And we were taking care of her all night, and Russell and I decided to take her back to the hotel because she could hardly even stand up. <laughs> oh no. Russell, the, the woman dude. is the boss. Yeah. yeah. Russell, yeah. And so Russell's the one that was hitting, hitting on, on me. And so we get back to the hotel, and um, I went to the bathroom, and then he went to the bathroom. I went out and changed. And he came out of the bathroom and his penis was out of his pants and he was offering it to me. Mm -hmm. In his forward fashion. In his forward fashion. Mm -hmm. And I said, excuse my language, what the fuck are you doing? And it caught him off guard. And then I just dove into bed next to the 19 year old that had stayed behind. And the fourth person. The fifth person. And so the next morning he apologized in a non apologetic way. Like I'm a dumbass. And I just was like, it's okay. And so I 
the rest of the trip just battled with myself trying to figure out what was in me that brought that to me mm -hmm. and I I was doing it all in my head logically like okay okay I'm gonna just pause you for a second and say you'll notice that she's not regarding herself as a victim she's taking responsibility even though she wasn't being honest with herself she's being honest with herself now yeah. and she is taking responsibility for what was happening she's taking responsibility for the fact that she didn't shut him down right off the bat and said that's not gonna fly with me yeah. <clears throat> so it means that there's a part of her that really wanted to be flattered and wanted to be adored and desired by this handsome forward man that was you know attracted to her and it was proving something to a part of her that feels like she's not good enough or attractive enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, at one point of the night I told him that it felt nice that he was making me feel sexy and not like I was just a mom. That, like, that's the thing that stuff Yeah, we don't look at you and think mom. <laughs> that's just what I feel. I know. Um, For this part of you, yeah. I was very surprised to hear that I didn't know you were a mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. am. <laughs> Tee -hee. So, anyway, yeah, I just kept in my head, in my head, and, um, he wasn't around us too much more the rest of the time, because he stayed with his girlfriend, but he lives in California. And so whenever I was around him, he, she was there, or whatever. So, I just kept trying to look at him and learn what I, what I was supposed to learn from it and I really did I learned so much wonderful but I uh, we he and I were supposed to take her um, partner to the airport and I confronted him after we had I just told him that it wasn't okay like I had said mm -hmm. and that I felt really uncomfortable and I told him that he's the type of guy I've always brought into my life and it really made me mad that... Meaning a predator? A predator, yeah. yeah. And it really made me mad to see that even though I'm married, I'm still attracting guys like this. Mm -hmm. And he was, he acted really sincere after that, like, and... It just like there was no sexual tension anymore and so it was a big relief but then I came home and told Brandon mm -hmm. and he's just he, I don't know. he slept somewhere else last night and so it's just huge for me mm -hmm. because now I'm starting to feel my abandonment stuff and that's what I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's good too. It's so hard. Yeah. Well, just know, Delaine, that we... <laughs> <clears throat> what she is manifesting is that she was, she was abused as a child, sexually, and then abandoned. <laughs> And uh, it didn't work. She didn't repeat the abuse with Russell, you know, having a predator come on to her who then abandoned her. She stood up for herself. But she's counting on uh, her husband to be there for her. And her wounded energy and, and her story that she told, understandably, triggered him. He has abandonment issues, too. And it just turns out that when we have a, a severe issue, we're married to somebody with that issue. That's part of the attraction. So the issues have a balance or a mirror. There were mirrors for each other. And so <clears throat> right now she's having to face her abandonment, which is hard. But it's also good. It's good that she was able to own that she has such a big part of her that's still into the old game.